Hi, I'm uh, Ariel Cohen. I'm from uh, Oracle. Uh, when uh, a few uh, months ago, when the uh, NVMe TCP uh, patches were submitted, I started uh, doing a performance uh, study to uh, compare uh, NVMe TCP to NVMe Rocky and the motivation was uh, mostly in terms of uh, using this for uh, use cases uh, at Oracle. I, I haven't been personally involved in the uh, standardization or the implementation of this, so I uh, take no credit for it and accept no blame for it. <laughs> uh, I was focused on studying the, uh, uh, the performance. And uh, uh, I don't need to go through the introduction to this. Uh, uh, Roy gave us a very good introduction uh, on, uh, on, uh, on this topic. So um, one thing I will say is that Rocky, uh, you know, is RDMA over converged Ethernet, uh, which gives you a hardware transport, uh, zero copy memory transfer. So clearly it has um, hardware that, that uh, provides better um, performance than doing something like software TCP. So uh, what comparisons uh, were run? So basically, I was looking at the uh, kernel implementation and the SPDK implementation. They're both available. And then in each one, comparing uh, TCP to Rocky. And the SPDK, I'm sure most of you are familiar with it, the Storage Performance Development Kit, which is um, which provides tools and libraries for writing high performance uh, user mode storage applications, and it has this uh, pulled mode operation. So I was interested in SPDK versus kernel, and also in the performance tools. Uh, you know, there's FIO with the famous FIO, and then there's perf that's part of SPDK, which uh, has lower overhead. So I uh, wanted to compare those and also see the impact of the MTU. So this was a pretty extensive study, and the uh, results are in the uh, paper that I posted. Uh, there, there, there's a lot there. I can't go over all of it, but um, I'll go at least uh, over some of it, and then the rest uh, you can see in the paper. So this is a basic test configuration with two servers back-to-back -back over 100 gig Ethernet. Uh, one, one client, one target, um, fairly low-end servers, uh, each one dual CPU with uh, eight cores per CPU, 2.1 gigahertz, 32 gigabytes of memory. Nick is a uh, Mellanox Connect X5, which is uh, capable of uh, Rocky in hardware. Uh, here are the software versions. It's 419 with the NVMe patches, NVMe TCP patches, and SPDK and FIO versions. Um, I wanted to study the performance of the protocols in isolation from any um, uh, NVMe device uh, performance aspect. So it's, I use a null uh, block storage device uh, in, in, this, in these tests as the target. And the workload was a random mixed reads and writes for the FIO and perf uh, workload. So let's start with, um, impact of MTU, which was uh, kind of one of the first things I ran for some reason. Um, so this is with the NVMe TCP. The numbers you see in this chart, they're all in thousands of IOPS. So when it says, you know, 1,000, 1,084, you know, it's a million um, IOPS, uh, over, over a million IOPS. So this, this ran with 32 client jobs, IO depth of eight, and you can see the impact, uh, you know, 1,500, 9,000 MTU. And it's significant um, with NVMe TCP, about uh, 28 to 50% increase as you go with the larger MTU. Obviously, for the larger I.O. sizes, a small I.O. size like 512, it's not going to make a difference. Um, also, lower latency. With SPDK, I ran the same thing. The difference is less significant, but it's still significant. Uh, with Rocky, you won't see this because it's, um, you know, obviously that's done in hardware, so it's not a, an issue with dealing with the smaller packets. Um, so what, what, what workloads did I uh, test? So I did, um, I did the workloads with 32 jobs, which basically used um, all the cores on the, on the client. And um, 
I did uh, varying I.O. sizes, uh, so with I.O. Depth, depth 8, I'm not going to show the results of that workload here. We don't have the time. Uh, it's in the paper. But I will go over quickly the, uh, the single job case with different I.O. depth and the 32 job case with different I.O. depth with the size of four, four kilobyte size, uh, I.O. size. Uh, so let's start with the kernel and TCP versus Rocky with one job. So here we see basically the IOPS on the, again, it's in thousands. Um, you can see that uh, Rocky, so you get good performance. So uh, throughout this whole thing, I need to say that NVMe TCP provides fairly good performance. And in, in a lot of these graphs, you will see Rocky is much higher, but it, it, that shouldn't distract you from the fact that actually NVMe TCP performs well. It's naturally Rocky has uh, capabilities in terms of the hardware implementation and the zero copy and so on that are not there uh, with the software TCP. So in general, with this study, you know, the, kind of the, the, the how the story ends is, is known. You know, the uh, Rocky is going to perform better. SPDK is going to perform better than the kernel and, and um, FIO and the perf performs better than FIO. So that. We, we know what the results would be, and that's, those were my expectations. And indeed, there, were no, there weren't really any major surprises, but the interest is in kind of quantifying it. I wanted to see what is the difference. So here we see in this jobs one case, about two, two to four times higher um, IOPS with, um, with Rocky. And similarly with the latency, the impact is uh, similar. Um, the, lo the local... Uh, node block device is 1.3 microseconds, so it's very negligible in the, uh, the latency uh, picture here. Um, okay, so let's look at 32 jobs. Um, we basically get uh, between 28% higher to three times the, the IOPS on, um, on Rocky compared to, uh, to TCP. And... Um, we're getting, you know, I mean, the, if you look at the local no block device, it's seven and a half million IOPS, so you can compare to what we're seeing here with, uh, we're getting up to a million on this, on this uh, setup with uh, NVMe TCP, and we're able to get to the three million um, <clears throat> on Rocky. Okay, similar on, on latency of uh, TCP versus Rocky. CPU load, uh, in general, you will see that the client CPU load in this kind of test is higher than the target because it's also, you know, it's one client, one target, and the client is running the actual I.O. load uh, test utility. Um, you will see, you know, here that the, uh, again, significantly lower CPU uh, load to throughput ratio for Rocky, again, as expected. Um, but you can see both on the client and on the target what the, uh, what the CPU is like for uh, Rocky versus TCP. I won't go over this in detail, but you can see it in the paper, uh, more, look at it more carefully. Yeah. Yep. Just uh, when you say job, you mean? Um, Execution unit, like a thread, or yeah. Um, I mean, so this is basically a job in the uh, in like F, basically FIO job. Right. So it's another. And thread. and what was the um, how many? Like every time you use a certain amount of jobs, you have as many as CPUs as these jobs, or you? I I had so I on the server I um, on the so I had sixteen CPUs there, and I ran thirty two jobs. Hyperthreading was enabled. That was the uh, the setup. So it's actually eight CPUs with hyperthreading. It's sixteen CPUs, physical CPUs, hyperthreading. Ah, so okay. And what was the, your uh, affinity strategic strategy with regarding to uh, was it diagonal interrupts? Did you run it? Did you run it on both NUMA nodes? You know, uh, yeah, maybe yeah, you can. Yeah, I did not make. Any, so basically, I did not try to set up any. Uh, to, to, to kind of stitch any particular uh, affinity there. I just ran it. Uh, so it whatever the driver is doing? Right. For, right. for the case of TCP? Yep. And also and you're, you're probably right. running, um, it's a, probably it's a modern node, node that has two, two NUMA sockets, right? So Correct. 
Okay, because many times in network uh, micro benchmarking, people are using only the NUMA node, which is closer to the card. So you, you use it like out of the box, uh, you didn't uh, touch it. So anything. what I did, right, for the 32, I used it out of the box for the 32 jobs. For the single job case, I did set the affinity. Uh, to the to closer the NUMA node? Right. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. Thanks. Okay, okay, let's continue. So SPDK. Uh, you know, we transition from kernel to SPDK. Now this is kind of an anomaly case here that I don't fully uh, know the reasons for it. So as you can see here in the jo single job case, there is a big gap between, um, between TCP mm -hmm. and Rocky. And basically TCP, I didn't get on this set, on the case of single job, I didn't get much benefit on the, on the higher IO depths from SPDK. I'm not sure why, but that's but with Rocky I did get a big benefit, so that's why you're seeing this big uh, gap here. In the 32 job case, um, it, it looks more like what I expected it to be. Um, and in fact, when I used perf as opposed to FIO, also this anomaly wasn't quite there. So um, that's something to look into why the gap is as, as wide as it is here, similar with uh, latency. Um, and let's look at the 32 job case. Again, you know, Rocky versus uh, TCP um, with SPDK, you get two to seven times the IOPS on, uh, on uh, Rocky. And, you know, we're getting pretty close here actually to the, you know, this 5,000 something IOPS with Rocky is, uh, is, it basically boils down to 170 something um, gigabits per second, so close to the bi-directional bandwidth of the um, of the wire. Um, yeah, similar uh, with the latency, you know, lower latency for Rocky. Okay, so how does the kernel compare to um, to SPDK? So here's this kind of anomalous case that I that I to told you about. The jobs equals one. If you compare kernel and SPDK. When IO depth is one or two, I see a nice increase with SPDK compared to the kernel. But then at the higher IO depths, for some reason, it's not the case. Um, so that's something to uh, look at because that's not what I expected to see. No, this. I'm sorry? While he's getting the mic, I mean, this is, a, this is what you should expect to see because because you're getting over 32 CPUs, right? So, so at, thir at around 16 to 32, you're seeing the inflection because the kernel is doing a better job of balancing your CPUs. Um, right, but the, on this, even on the single job case, I would have expected to see um, a benefit with SPDK. Yeah. Single job was better, right? SPDK. No, no, this is, this is all a single job. What you see here on the x-axis is the number, it's the IO depth. Oh, this is not CPU. This is just higher depth. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that doesn't make sense. Yes. Right, right. So this is not what I. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yes. Uh, just the question is: Is the uh, kernel versus SPDK is on the target side, or on the initiator, or both? Both. 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 Okay, I will think about it. <laughs> okay. Um, right. Okay. So. Okay, so kernel versus SPDK for Rocky. So actually Rocky gets a big boost out of SPDK, um, bigger boost than, uh, than TCP. Um, so it makes, it makes a very significant difference when you move from kernel to SPDK. So a, a quick uh, clarifying question on that. When you say SPDK TCP, what does that mean? So, so NVMe TCP, TCP has an, impl an implementation within SPDK. So it's an SPDK implementation of the TCP stack. Yes, yeah. so in user level. Yeah. <coughs> okay, let's look at the 32 job case. Um, so here it behaves more like I expected when you go from um, you know kernel to SPDK. Uh, you do get uh, a benefit throughout the different I/O depths for the 32 job case, unlike the one job case. Um, so this is what it looks like for uh, TCP. Um, a nice increase as you go into the higher um, I/O depths. And this is Rocky uh, also for thir uh, for 32 jobs, um, and we're basically getting also a, a very nice boost with uh, SPDK. Uh, I mean, a, a bigger boost, actually. 
Okay, so um, another interesting thing is what, what does the uh, latency distribution actually look like? So, um, you know, there, there is, a, I showed some results with latency, but those are, that's average latency. Um, a natural question is, how is the latency distributed? Do you get a lot of, uh, you have a long tail, are there um, some I.O., on average they may be good, but there are quite a few I.O.s that have um, a high latency. So it's always important to study the distribution, not just the, the average. And um, so FIO actually spits out uh, latency distributions as well, so it's uh, fortunately pretty easy to, to look at that. So I looked at the 32 jobs, I.O. size 4 kilobyte, and varying the I.O. depth uh, per job 8 and 16. Um, uh, I/O depth per, per job. So here's what I got for uh, the 30 for um, I/O depth eight. So you see different uh, latency ranges there, and um, comparing the TCP kernel, TCP SPDK, Rocky kernel, Rocky SPDK. So you know the the red one is TCP kernel. So you see it has. Um, it, it's more. It's shifted more to the right because hi higher latency has has more tail to it. Um, when you go from kernel to SPDK in the kind of the, li the light blue, light gray graph, um, you get you know lower latency, less tail. And then with Rocky, um, you can see the Rocky kernel in the yellow uh, graph, uh, which is to the left of the TCP uh, graphs because of again lower latency, less tail. And if you go to the Rocky with SPDK, then it's particularly good. So you can see how these uh, different protocols affect the distribution of the latency. As you go to deeper I.O. depths, you get more of a tail. Um, you get m more high latency I.O.s uh, coming in. So the difference is, is more pronounced. Um, so again, the kernel has a, has a longer tail than SPDK for both TCP and Rocky. Um, TCP has a longer tail than Rocky, and um, it's it's actually fairly uh, long tail for high higher I/O depths. Um, so that gave me some idea of what what that looks like. And I also mentioned that there are the, this other tool, Perf, um, that SPDK has for performance. So I, I actually compared the two, uh, Perf and FIO, uh, to see if it. It, it's truly the case that PERF is lower, uh, uh, lower overhead and provides better, uh, better results. So now in the red one you see FIO, um, light blue is PERF. So indeed the IOPS, this is um, for TCP, uh, they're higher for, uh, for PERF and it's 15% you know, to 34% higher. And this is where I, you know, I, this is this jobs one case where I had this uh, weird phenomenon with FIO where I wasn't seeing much benefit with SPDK, but um, here you see that actually it does do well as you go uh, into the I.O. depths with PERF versus FIO. So I'm not sure why they behave differently in this case, uh, but they do. And this is for the Rocky, uh, for, um, uh, I'm sorry, the 32 uh, um, uh, uh, okay, let me let me see what I did here. This was oh yeah, this was a 32 job. The previous one was the single job. So uh, again, you you see the 12% 20, to 26% higher IOPS with um, with perf. So you know, so it does actually make a difference to look at uh, perf in in addition to FIO when uh, when running uh, SPDK. Okay, so let's look at the what the actual latency numbers were, because it's a little bit hard to see from all the graphs. So I put it in these tables. Um, so you can see this is the jobs one, and let's say IO depth one. So you can see TCP kernel, I was getting 60 microseconds. So this is microseconds. Um, TCP SPDK brought it down to 33 with FIO, and then with PERF went down to 25. Rocky kernel, I got 21. And then Rocky with SPDK went down to five, so you can see kind of the impact of these. Of these, um, now you know. I think um, if you look at NVMe 
you know, PCI, NVMe, storage devices, you know, latency is deplete in the tens of microseconds. So it's, um, you know, these are not that big of an issue here. But, um, but you can see a, a comparison here of how, how, how big of a difference, you know, it makes if you just look at the uh, this la uh, protocol latency in isolation. Um, similarly, for 32 jobs, I provided a table here that shows you the, uh, how, how this works. You know, the gray part is the TCP and the white part. I did not run uh, Rocky with uh, perf. I only run, ran uh, TCP with uh, perf, so I don't have that column with uh, SPDK perf on the Rocky. Okay, so summary. Um, you know, they weren't really, it was what I expected, but I, I got a good handle on what the numbers are. Um, so the performance of NVMe TCP is quite good. So we got one million IOPS on this, you know, two server setup, client server, um, with uh, the kernel, 1.4 million IOPS with SPDK. Um, that was with the 32 jobs, IO depth eight, four kilobyte IO size. When you go to 9,000 MTU versus 1,500, you do get a meaningful increase with, uh, in performance with NVMe TCP. Rocky performance is significantly higher than NVMe TCP in all the tests. Uh, so in the, instead of one million IOPS in the kernel, we got two and a half million, uh, 5.4 million IOPS with SPDK instead of 1.4. Um, and, but SPDK increases performance significantly for both TCP and Rocky more so for Rocky than, than TCP, but it's significant for TCP as well. Um, longer latency tail for TCP versus Rocky, SPDK reduces the tail for both, and PERF shows better performance than FIO for NVMe TCP. I, I did not get the time to do it for Rocky. Okay, that's uh, what I had. Any additional questions? So uh, a question that comes to mind is whether uh, any of the differences, for example, between TCP and Rocky, as well as between TCP and uh, SPDK, you know, a kernel and SPDK would be to do due to some of the security uh, mechanisms that we have in the kernel. So to test that one, what could disable spectrum mitigations, what could one could try to disable SMAP support. Right, um, I have not tried uh, to do that. So I, I ran, so this was kernel 419 with whatever is in there. So I don't know if, I have not tried to um, disable the security mitigations. It, it, it might be interesting to to run with that as well. So Did the CPU support SMAP? I'm sorry? Did the CPU support SMAP? I don't know. How yeah. did you run it with 419? Uh, 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 use the mic, use the mic. It, it's 419 with the, uh, with the, the uh, patches, with the NVMe TCP. All right, I repeat the question for the, for this, for my mom. Oh, okay, uh, the question was. She's gonna see the video. Yeah, the question was uh, how, how it was tested in 419 when it was, uh, <clears throat> in the patch was introduced in five, right? Um, yeah, but there's a 419 with the, with the patches for, with NVMe TCP, and that's, that's what I used for this. It's not kernel five, it's 419. <clears throat> is the question from Michael and or really that uh, the kernel NVMe TCP numbers are too low? Is that what you guys are saying? I mean, it's actually pretty in line, right? A million IOPS through TCP is pretty high. And is, uh, I, I think the earlier point that Or was probably making maybe was uh, the setup, your interrupt uh, distribution may not have been the best for the sake of TCP. So it could probably have got better numbers, no? Um, well, like I said, with this jo single job case, I pinned the, uh, I, I set the affinity uh, locally to the, the uh, core. For, for the single case. For the single case, single case 32, I let it uh, go where it goes. Yeah. Okay. Um, we can probably afford one more question, that's it. Anybody who wants? Okay. <coughs> so, Certainly the NVMe OTCP kernel number are quite low and the latency d distribution is everywhere. This is with the null block device, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So your latency starts with 30 or so, something like that, and it goes to 1500. 
did you try to use any uh, TCP optimizations like RMEM, WMEM, any I of those tuning parameters? I have not changed any of the tuning parameters. It's of just TCP. out of the box. Out of the box, it's uh, yeah, out of the box. I mean, the thing is with changing questions, what to change to, and then it's like, is it a whack-a-mole where, you know, you improve it for some workload but not another, right? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so it sounds like the TCP variant may need some retweaking and then. Um, yeah, be, be nice. So, to anybody run. wanting to if, if give there are some suggestions for tuning? Yeah, just either. send him email and yep. he, yep. Can, he can read. Thank you. Take my hand of applause. Thanks.